Today's state budget forecast for the next two biennia contains four great news for the people of our state. The healthy forecasted surpluses for the next five years should provide the basis for responsible fiscal policies and reliable funding of the services upon which Minnesotans depend. They show a remarkable recovery from the financial shambles in which I took office eight years ago. The November 2010 forecast projected a state budget surplus deficit of $6.2 billion for the next two fiscal years. To make matters worse, the state owed our school districts $1.8 billion of delayed payments, which had been unilaterally imposed to mask previous deficits. There was virtually no budget reserve and only a minimal cash flow account. Today, in addition to these healthy forecasted surpluses, we will have over $2 billion in hard cash deposited in our reserve fund. We've paid off entirely our school debt and increased their state funding by $2 billion. We revealed our state's credit, restored our state's credit rating to AAA with two of our three rating agencies. This state is in tremendous fiscal shape. The principal reason for this extraordinary budget turnaround is that Minnesota's employers have added over 318,000 jobs during the past eight years. In October, our state reported over 2,978 million jobs. Sorry, let me say it. Reported 2.978 million jobs, just short of 3 million. The most in history. Our statewide unemployment rate has dropped from 6.9% when I became governor to 2.8% today. Those drops in unemployment have occurred statewide. Alexandria's unemployment rate dropped from 11.7% in January 2011 to 2.2% .2 in October 2018. Bemidji's fell from 15.3% to 2.6%. Rainers from 19.1% to 3.2%. Airbus from 11.3% to 2.4%. Fairmont's from 7.9% to 2.8%. And Grand Rapids from 17.2% to 3.8%. At last count, there were over 16,000 job vacancies in Minnesota, an unprecedented number. And our state's medium household income is 14% above the national average. There are still too many people in our state who have not achieved this prosperity. A disproportionate number of our farmers, minorities, and recent immigrants are suffering economically. But overall, our state's economic condition has dramatically improved. I realize that this success is a great disappointment a few ideologues, who are certain that our administration's policies would cause the state's ruination. They were wrong. Instead, those policies helped us balance the state's budget, pay off the school debt, and make important new investments such as all-day kindergarten. However, as I have always said, the credit for our strong and sustained economic recovery belongs to the people of Minnesota the business owners, executives, and entrepreneurs who had the confidence in Minnesota to create most of those over 300,000 jobs here. To our state's tremendous workers, whose work ethic and productivity turned those new investments into profitable ventures. And to the people who educated them, fed them, and supported their successes. In 2010, I said my goal was a better Minnesota. Thanks to the people of Minnesota, we have achieved it. I have to to questions. Governor, uh, those uh, were pretty dark days uh, when you took office those uh, eight years ago. Uh, today you're, standing, you're sitting here telling us about all of this. Is this what you think your legacy is? Again, I don't claim credit for this. 
I've worked city governor during a time when this economic resurgence occurred, thanks to the people of Minnesota. That's where the credit belongs. I think our policies supported that, helped that, but uh, the real credit belongs with people. Governor, uh, Governor like Wall campaigned on increasing the gas tax. He said today he still wants to go through there. There's a surplus now. You don't have to worry about this fight that's going to happen. Republicans say they don't want it. What would be your advice to him going into this with this surplus? Well, I think he's, I've supported a gasoline tax increase since 2012. We need a separate, sustained, reliable source of additional revenue for the road improvements that are needed. Last year, we had the quarters of commerce, and we had we were able to fund the top four projects. And I believe there were there were 172 other projects that uh, were submitted that couldn't be funded because of the lack of funds. I mean, that's the imbalance we have with the real needs for transportation improvements and, and uh, re the reality of existing funding. To take what was uh, part of the surplus the last couple of years put fancy name quarters of commerce on it, but it's still general fund money, which is available because of the uh, improving economy, but that's not guaranteed to last over the next decade, and that's what we, kind of commitment we have to make to increase transportation funding. So what would you tell Governor like Walls as he faces headwinds from Republicans on this? Uh, get used to the headwinds. <laughs> Governor, you mentioned the shambles in regard to the shortfalls when you entered office. Now, as you're leaving office, can you express what it feels like to leave the state in this situation? <laughs> a whole lot better than it did eight years ago. I remember the shutdown and the uh, sense of urgency, the sense of crisis, the sense of you know, how we're going to find a, a resolution here that's, that's acceptable, especially in the midst of real intransigence from leaders on the other side, so I feel very good about it. I feel very, very good about it, having a DFL House of Representatives and uh, Speaker to be Ms. Horman, a fabulous leader. Uh, that'll make a huge difference to Governor Rolls and his ability to put uh, a, a cooperative twist on, this, on the process and, and a positive outcome. Senator Gazelka, you know, we disagree on policy matters, but he's an honor honorable man and he's got a very slight majority, so I think that'll be a workable uh, arrangement, uh, the three branches, three units there. And uh, I look forward to seeing positive results from Minnesota. And how does it feel to be able to return to the public to communicate with us today? I'm sorry? How does it feel to return to the public guy here to be able to communicate with us on this day? Uh, as I said, a lot better than it did eight years ago. I feel very good about what we've been able to accomplish. With very great respect and appreciation to our team, commissioners, staff at the office. Uh, it's been a team effort all the way. And of course, a lot of groups around the state have supported what we're doing, but it's, um, it's a good feeling. How are you feeling, Governor? Uh, I'm better. I'm better. I'm, I've still got a ways to go to recover from, from the complications caused by wind. My lungs are still have improved, but they're still not uh, nearly what they were before, and how long that's going to take. Whether it'll be a permanent recovery remains to be seen, but you know it's uh, it's not the way I would wish to go out as governor. That's the biggest disappointment. The last two months, I've been you know I, I plan to travel around the state and see projects that were successful and thank uh, people responsible for that. And instead, I'm mired in a oxygen tank. So it's uh, but you know then I look at what happens to people in their lives unexpectedly and, and setbacks of many far more catastrophic than mine. And uh, I'm not mindful to be grateful for what I do. Uh, the dogs seem to understand? The dogs understand fine. The dogs are not going to understand on January 8th why we're not back in the residence. <laughs> they're, they're applying for an extension for the wolves. <laughs> Do you have a new house? <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm, I've got an apartment in Minneapolis that I'm renting, it, renting on a month-to-month -month basis until I sort of figure out what I want to do with my life and the rest of my life and where I want to, where I want to be in the lake. So. You can get somewhere warm in January? Is it? Are you going to head somewhere warm in January? I might do that. You know, my part of my question is I don't know what my physical capabilities are going to be, but 
There's got to be some somewhere where to take take somebody to sit and I, I don't trouble. I don't like sitting. I don't like be, I don't like beaches. I like state budgets, you know. I, I, Brenda might need somebody to carry her, you know, her, her, her piece. There we go. Yeah. Governor Dave, can you give us an insight as to what you might be doing next? Uh, I really don't know. I, I, I want to find something that involves kids. I've been saying, you know, partly facetiously, I'd like to be a hall monitor in elementary school and high five all the kids as they go by. I find that that really inspiring. I, you know, I, I respect what Justice Page has done with his third grade reading and, you know, some real hands on, and maybe not full time, but just stay connected with the future of this country. But I don't have any specific plans. You know, Pat just asked you a few minutes ago about legacy, and with regard to your legacy in education in Minnesota, what are your thoughts on what you were able to accomplish for education and kids in Minnesota? The all day kindergarten, and the beginning foundation for pre K, which should be available to every child in Minnesota whose parents uh, wish that for them. But we got, we got part way there, more to do. Uh, starting to refund higher education, you know, which had fallen in 2012, state support for higher education in real dollars was the lowest it been since 1981. And the, the capital budget, uh, just the basic repairs and maintenance, uh, seriously underfunded and, and overdue. And some of the, I feel good about the University of Minnesota, the new medical buildings put there. I'm convinced that uh, medical jobs, technology, uh, is going to be a big part of that Minnesota's economic success in the future with Mayo, what's happened down in Rochester with Mayo University and its uh, medical status here. And, and uh, we'll become a me mecca for the kind of innovation that's going to create new companies, new jobs, already is, but even more so. So I, I think that's one of the most important lasting contributions that my priorities have made. Cameron, you've been involved in high-level public policy for many, many years. How difficult will it be to transition away from that? And do you look forward to transitioning away from that? Well, Mix, you're, I mean, you're absolutely right. And, uh, it's going to be a big shift. You know, I'll, I might have to start tweeting. <laughs> <laughs> See if my followers get into double digits. <laughs> any, any final questions? Governor, what would you say to Governor Kirpich at this moment? He taught me a lot. He taught me about the importance of making things happen. He taught me about jobs, jobs, jobs. That's the way I feel best about here. 18,400 more jobs in Minnesota in the last eight years. Yeah, we had an economic upturn, but our policies for that, our investments in education will help sustain that. I mean, that's what it's all about. It's about people working and having better lives and being a part of that. And he was engaged in that all full time, and I learned a lot from that. Governor, there's been a lot of talk about uncertainty in the forecast. That's been a big watchword. In, that, in terms of uncertainty, what would you uh, counsel Governor Walls to keep his eye on most closely? I mean, we're hearing about the possible Chinese-U.S. Cold War today. What would you say is the thing you really you need give to watch all, give it all back attitude to the, the Republicans. You know, they passed in 2017 uh, business property tax fees, which is going to cost the state uh, treasury a billion dollars over the next decade. Well, I mean, there are justifications for that, but... When they come back in and say 1.5 billion surplus from the next 1.7 or 1.5 billion from 1.5. You know, give it all back to us with more tax cuts and, and bring the, you know, the treasury down to zero. Uh, put, the, put up the red flags. One final question Governor, from Jesse here. On the topic of higher education, could you um, give us your thoughts on the selection of Joan Gable as the, the loan? I don't, I don't know. I don't know her. I don't know anything about her other than what I've read. Uh, she's got a big job, big responsibility. I admire the fact she's willing to have her name put forward. Uh, she impressed uh, one of the 12 regions and others involved, so you know, they, they spent a lot of time on it. I wish her all the best. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.